your number one source of the latest news, opinions, and in-depth investigations that dig deeper into today's developing stories around the globe. The government failed to prove R. Kelly guilty of racketeering where the record is devoid of evidence of an enterprise comprised of members who shared a common illegal or fraudulent purpose and where the defendant and the alleged enterprise were indistinct. The government brought a RICO prosecution against R. Kelly, not to remedy widespread criminal activity of an enterprise, but to punish one man whose alleged crimes could no longer be prosecuted by state and local agencies. We should all know that to convict R. Kelly of racketeering, the government must prove, at a minimum, the existence of an enterprise and a related pattern of racketeering activity. The government's evidence was insufficient to prove R. Kelly guilty of violating the Mann Act as to any of the witnesses. No rational juror could conclude that R. Kelly enticed, persuaded, induced or coerced any of the women, including the key witness Jane, to travel along with him. All R. Kelly did was invite her to join him and she accepted. The government suggested that R. Kelly's mere act of arranging their travel is sufficient to demonstrate that he induced them to travel with him. The law suggests otherwise. The Second Circuit has made clear that the terms persuade, induce, entice and coerce are words of common usage that have plain ordinary meanings. The court distinguishes this conduct from merely asking which is not sufficient to prove criminality. R. Kelly's legal team brings to light the fact that the New York public health law is unconstitutionally vague, and his Mann Act convictions predicated on that law must be vacated. Furthermore, his Mann Act convictions predicated on a violation of California Health and Safety Code must be vacated because, the government charged him with a repealed version of the statute that was unconstitutionally vague. The government failed to prove R. Kelly guilty of forced labor of Geronda and Faith based on an isolated sex act that neither Geronda nor Faith characterized it as forced, no rational juror could conclude that R. Kelly knowingly obtained, or agreed to obtain, any labor or services from them. These charges are yet another example of the government's desperate effort to stretch a statute far beyond its intended purpose, to reach conduct that can no longer be reached by state authorities. R. Kelly was denied a fair and impartial jury where several of the seated jurors admitted that they prejudged the defendant's guilt, and trial counsel provided ineffective assistance of counsel when he failed to move to disqualify patently unqualified jurors. Two of them had even watched the surviving R. Kelly docuseries. The government presented no evidence that R. Kelly was experiencing a herpes-related infection during his sexual encounters with Faith, who also admitted that she did not contract the infection from him. Accordingly, the government failed to prove a violation of the New York public health law. The disease is easily treated with a suppressive drug and people often experience complete remission from infection. The district court assumed that infected meant having the virus rather than having the ability to transmit it. The district restitution award for Jane and Stephanie's herpes treatment was unsupported by the government's evidence. In sum, the government cannot satisfy the causal connection between the offenses for which R. Kelly was convicted and Jane's contraction of herpes. But even if it could, the government just attempts to punish R. Kelly and enrich Jane by forcing him to pay a quarter million dollars to her, even though there is no evidence that she follows and will continue to follow a suppressive regimen of Valtrex, or that she cannot treat her herpes with a non-brand version of Valacyclovir. As the last nail in the coffin, the district court lacked authority to order the Bureau of Prisons to turn over money seizes from R. Kelly's trust fund to the clerk of court for future restitution payments. The district court lacked authority to direct the Bureau of Prisons to turn over roughly $27,000 seized from R. Kelly's trust account because he was not provided with any default notice. For the above-mentioned reasons, R. Kelly's convictions must be reversed. Alternatively, he is entitled to a new trial. Thank you for watching today's video brought to you by SOS Media. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of our videos. Also remember to leave your comment about today's topic in the comment section below.